Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Red Dead Online. If you enjoy this video, please go to your local church and replace all of the crosses with pelicans, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. So I spawn in, and for some reason I'm stranded up in the snowy mountains, shirtless, freezing, and ready to game. I don't know what pelican of the past was even doing in the middle of nowhere, and my useless horse won't come so I'll have to jog to the closest town. Sorry, you came here for a platonic gaming video, and now you're likely extremely turned on, my be. At least we're sort of recreating the single player campaign intro segment, except I'm thick and lost. Well actually, I guess in many ways Arthur was lost on a spiritual level as he struggled to come to terms with the life he had chosen. He also obviously had a dump truck out back, so this is actually a pretty accurate reiteration. I hunt myself some lunch, and then finally arrive at the town where I can fast travel. At this moment, my horse decides to show up, and it's not even my expensive horse. It's Scrawny Nag, the dodgy malnourished hoofed mammal they give you when your horse is dead. I only hate three things in this world. Racists, people who aren't from the same country as me, and Scrawny Nag. At least we're back, and I put on my snappiest outfit, ready to seize the day. A great timing too, because a fine lass rocks up, and she is looking cute. I'm about to murder that kitty. I proceed to shoot a slightly overweight domestic Bengal house cat purely so I can make this pretty questionable pun. The epic gamer girl then impolitely rides off without even so much as messaging me a link to her Instagram. Like I'm not joking, she didn't even send a courtesy lewd pic. I was honestly pretty shook, and I feel common decency is a dying practice. This dude called Tom Tom then runs in out of nowhere and starts non-consensually choking me. What a roller coaster of emotions this morning has been. If the fat man running in the snow didn't get you going, then I'm 100% sure you're ready now. I head over to Valentine, fetch my good horse, and get ready to check out this new Bounty Hunter update. I buy a license and select the new legendary target by the name of Gene Finley. It's strange how this poster says like and subscribe, or Stealtho Carbo will gently kiss you on the lower thigh while you sleep. Anyway, what kind of parents go through the frankly inspirational process of giving birth just to name their child Gene? If your name's Gene, you either abduct children or you're an accountant who also abducts children, but understands that full-time employment is the cornerstone of a thriving economy. Either way, let's go murder Gene. I decide to take a canoe into his base, because if the guards see me, they may just think I'm a civilian who enjoys low-impact water sports. I know things are about to get pretty violent, but this is an incredibly blissful experience. The guards somehow see through my immaculate cover and open fire, so it looks like the stealth option is now off the cards. I play so many different games and the controls are all slightly different. This means the first combat encounter of the day is always sketchy as my muscle memory comes back. These volunteers sometimes come to my actual in real life door trying to raise money for people in need and I just tell them to walk a mile in my shoes. I don't want to hear about other people's problems when I'm out here being shot at struggling to figure out what goddamn button it is to take cover. I should probably start a charity and give myself a platform to raise funds and tell my story. The story of a privileged male who had it all until he bought too many video games that had very dissimilar control layouts and he would momentarily get confused. I know this is getting way too sad and political, but occasionally I've got to speak from the heart. Anyway, commandeering a minigun really makes short work of guards. I find a hostage, and so I free him, and he tells me that Gene is hiding in the big white house. It looks like they were hand-feeding the hostage salted oysters with fresh lemon and didn't even give him an appropriate wine pairing. These guys are really disturbed human beings and must be stopped. I find the big girl and he begs for his life. Fortunately for him, I get a bonus if he's captured alive, so he gets his wish. It's quite impressive how clean he's kept his suit and boots, as we are currently in a swamp. Gene's best known for orchestrating elaborate bank robberies, but perhaps he should get into dry cleaning. I obviously can't be bothered taking the stairs, so I take a shortcut over the balcony, and I kid you not, he dies. It definitely didn't help that I landed on him, but if you fat shame me for crushing a powerless human, I'll cry. I make my way over to Rhodes without too much trouble and deliver the bounty to the sheriff, earning a nice $48 reward. I now almost have enough cash to extend my moonshine shack and build a bar, which sounds wholesome. I can't be doing bounties by myself though, it's dangerous, so I need to recruit another player to my crew. I find the perfect candidate who seems to have tied up another player and is about to pour rum on him and I guess light the poor restrained man on fire creative, but I tell him that he stinks using my favourite emote, and he replies with a vulgar gesture and proceeds to leave. I just saved this guy's life, and I didn't even use violence, which may be a first for me, ever. 
I think he must be AFK though, as he's not breaking free, so I decide I'll just take him to the pub with me. I dump him out the front and send him a message asking if he wants to wet the beak with me. All I get is coldness though, as he even pulls a gun out on me and then leaves. He has no idea that I'm his guardian angel. Why even bother doing good things if no one knows about them? I should have let him burn. I sink a couple of cold ones by myself, which is dampening, and then set off to find a friend. I spot a gunslinger, appropriately named for the time period, Hockeyman444. If I get rejected again, I'll just accept that not everyone in the world has to like me. I'm kidding, I'll probably just KMS due to low self-worth. Hockey man rides off and my boy goes straight to the pub. I even hitch my horse because I'm all about that immersive roleplay. Hockey actually has whiter clothes than Jean did. I have found the alpha laundry washer. We bond over casual alcoholism and besides me accidentally choking him out briefly, the trust between us builds. The media always talks about the negative effects of drinking, but never the positive stuff. Did you know Vincent van Gogh was an alcoholic? Man revolutionized the world with his post-impressionism style, but he could also straw pedo a whiskey long neck like a champ. Alexander the Great ruled the ancient Greek kingdom, but on a Saturday afternoon, he was deep seshing with the boys. The point is, I found a new mate and Hockey Man and I are about to hunt down some bounties so I can build a bar in my moonshine shack and drink my way to a better future from the comfort of my own home. Our first target requires a little bit of investigating, which is fine by me as I've seen Scooby-Doo Monsters Unleashed where they solved the Coolsville mystery. I was actually quite young when that came out and I spent most of my time trying to figure out the mystery of why Daphne's low cut tops made me happy. But the point is, I know my way around a clue. We learn the bounty is held up at a nearby shack and I pull out a bow and arrow and get to work. Shooting people with arrows in this game is so ridiculously satisfying for some reason. Almost as satisfying as lassoing people off their mode of transport. I deliver the dodgy malacca to Saint Denis and pocket a cool $24 for my efforts. My boy Hockey is a real legend and we go about our business together but also find time to have a few laughs. Like for example here where I trap him in this prison cell or this woman who's worried because her husband has been captured by a bunch of cannibals and I tell her that she stinks. Good clean fun. With one bounty done, I decide that we've earned a beverage and so we make our way over to my shack. It's good to be home and I go over and talk to Thick Maggie and purchase the bar. This is definitely one of the coolest things I've bought in Red Dead Online as it takes me a while to make cash. I present to you the modest Pelican pub where we keep the lights so dim you could slip anything into anyone's drink and no one would notice. Hockey and I mingle with the filthy NPCs. Remember when I exposed that NPCs weren't actually bots, they were in fact Venezuelan children being forced to play against their will? Why isn't the media talking about that truth bomb? The only thing that would make this bar better is a live band and a stage that costs $850. It's time to make a little money. We ride off to find a new target to hunt and a poor helpless woman asks us for assistance. Her brother has been kidnapped by some addicts and she's distraught. I tell her she stinks as I spent way too much purchasing this emote not to use it regularly. I wouldn't say the kidnappers have the greatest spatial awareness skills in the West, but we aren't here to take prisoners. I do thoroughly appreciate how Hockey insists on always using his knife rather than a gun. At this point, we are wingless walking angels. I will admit the lack of voice communication did occasionally cause mix-ups, but we overcame such obstacles and moved forward as a team. This was truly one of those moments where you meet a bro online and the chemistry is real. We dragged Venezuelan children along harsh rocky roads with our lassos. We dabbled in a little horse show jumping to demonstrate how cultured we are. We took turns riding on the back of a wagon, and I don't say this lightly, we are arguably the best two Red Dead Redemption Online players in the entire world. The serious cash was made and it's been way too long since we've drunk anything, so we head to our camp. I give Marto's mother a good smooching and then enjoy a well-deserved beer. It's at this moment I get a message from Hockey saying that he has to log off. This may be one of the saddest moments in gaming history. Don't worry if you're crying, I've even cried once. It was during Scooby-Doo Monsters Unleashed when Daphne put a coat over her low-cut dress, completely covering her chest. Anyway, I kill a bunch of animals and donate them to Crips so that I can make a delivery and get some easy cash. Now making a delivery is no joke, but nothing I can't handle by myself. Just kidding, I'm ambushed by some Venezuelan tots and the wheels well and truly come off. I'm not even sure how a wagon gets stuck in that position without braking. 
It reminds me of those goats that can climb but can't descend. Predictably, trying to save the situation goes quite terribly. Best player on the Oceanic Pro Circuit, no lie. The only thing to do now is to go back to my moonshine shack and drink my sorrows away. I invite the entire server in for a few cold ones. They're pretty rude to be honest and will never fill the whole Hockey 444 left in my heart, but at least I'm not drinking alone. I'm just pretending to drink in a video game, which is really cool. I even go in for a risky premarital hug on this fine lass and I don't know what the intentions were but we ended up in my bedroom. I best cut things off here or I may lose my status as the number one family friendly educational Christian music channel. The objective for next episode will be buying the band stage so we can play Christian music live. Thanks for watching you absolute legends, until next time and as always, stay classy.